All right, we are multiplying and dividing integers today. Um, this is a different set of rules uh, than, um, than adding and subtracting integers, okay? So we've got to separate the two. We have adding and subtracting rules, and then we have multiplying and dividing rules. Our multiplying and dividing rules say that if we have an even number of negatives in the expression, it's a positive answer. If we have an odd number of negatives in the expression, it's a negative answer. All right, so we multiply and divide like normal, and then we're looking for how many negatives actually are in the expression. All right, so again, you've got to keep these sets of rules separate depending on the operation. All right, take another minute and write these down. All right, so here's what it looks like in an example. All right, you're on your quiz on Monday, you're not going to see really difficult numbers to multiply and divide. You're not using your calculators. You should be able to do all of these using mental math. But here's what I'm testing you on. Can you apply the rules? Is your answer positive or negative? I'm more concerned with the sign of your answer. So if you get the sign wrong in your answer, the entire question is wrong. All right, so everybody knows what 5 times 7 is. What is it? It's 35, but is my answer positive or negative 35? Okay, here's why the answer is positive, because how many negatives do you have? Even. Two, and that is an even number. If you have an even number of negatives, it is a positive answer. If you have an odd number of negatives, it is a negative answer. All right, so 35. And then we've got negative 8 times 2, which is 16. But since we only have one negative, it's negative 16. Odd number of negatives, negative answer. So you see why I was talking about the fact that it is really important that you separate the rules for adding and subtracting. Because if you try to use those rules in here, you're going to get the sign wrong in your answer. Okay? Negative 12 times 0. 4 times negative 6. Do you agree? 24 or negative 24? Negative 24 because I have one negative. Now, most of the questions, guys, are either going to have one or two negatives. All right? Now, there will be questions that have more than that, and that's why the even-odd rule is the one that I teach because it applies no matter how many uh, numbers are being multiplied, all right? So the even-odd rule is what we go by. Now I want you to answer these five on your own. 9 times 2? 18. 18. Negative 3 times negative 4? Positive or negative? Positive. positive 12. Why? Because we have an even number of negatives. 5 times negative 5? Negative 25. Negative 7 times 7? Negative Zero times negative 14. Zero. Zero. Who got all five? Awesome. Anybody just miss one, maybe? Just miss one. All right. Now let's, let's uh, throw in some variables there, uh, here. So we're going to basically substitute and solve. All right. So let's look at example A first. It says evaluate A squared when A equals negative 3. If we're raising a negative number to an exponent, we need to place it in parentheses. And here's what it tells me. It tells me that I'm multiplying that number by itself. Negative 3 times negative 3. Okay? And now I can see how many negatives do I have. Two. So is my answer positive or negative? Positive. It's positive. 9. I want you to try to answer B. Answer B. And I'm going to make an adjustment here and make this negative 4. Okay, so we substitute uh, 2 times negative 4 times 6. Well, what's 2 times 4? 8. And what's 8 times 6? 48. Now, is our answer positive or negative? Negative. Why is it negative? Because how many negatives are in the expression? Only one. That's odd, so it's a negative answer. Okay, so I multiply it like normal, then I count how many negatives and positives. Okay, so let's substitute on this last slide. We've got negative 4, so we're going to plug in negative 4 for x. Remember, if I'm raising a negative to an exponent, I need to put it in parentheses. And then I multiply that by 2. 
Okay, I want you to solve it. Negative 4 squared is the same thing as negative 4 times negative 4 times positive 2. Well, what's... what? Okay, so let's just look at the numbers first. What's 4 times 4? 16. What's 16 times 2? 32. Now let's go back and look at our negatives. How many negatives do we have in the expression? So what does that make our answer? Positive. There's an even number of negatives in the expression, so it's a positive answer. All right, now let's look at dividing integers. The good news is that my rule is still the same. It's my even odd rule. I'm looking at how many negatives I have in the expression uh, to determine the sign of my answer. I want you to answer all seven of these. Okay, They're very simple as far as actually calculating it. The uh, part that I want to quiz you on it basically is um, what is the sign of your answer? Negative 28, or sorry, 28 divided by negative 4. What's it going to be? Negative You've got the sign right, but guys, come on now. It's negative 7. All right, what about negative 60 divided by negative 12? Divide, divide, divide. It is positive 5. Why? Two negatives, guys. Two negatives. Anything divided by 0 is just 0. Negative 24 divided by 6? Negative 4. 0 divided by negative 2? Is there such a thing as negative 0? Just 0. What about negative 39 divided by negative 13? Positive 3. Same reason, because I divided an even number of negatives, it's a positive answer. 19 divided by negative 1? Negative 19. Okay? All right, so you also have a few on your quiz on Monday where you are multiplying and dividing more than two numbers. Okay, so we're going to solve this left to right, and then we're going to go back and count how many negatives are there. That tells us the sign of our answer. Okay, so the number part is 30 whenever I simplify, but how many negatives do I have here? Three. Three negatives, so it is negative 30. Good job, good job. All right, now I want to give you, um, you've got a couple word problems on your homework and on your quiz on Monday. Uh, let's say that a hiker is descending 250 feet every 10 minutes. What will the change in elevation be in one hour. A hiker is descending 250 feet every 10 minutes. What will the change in elevation be in one hour? Here's how we work it out. They're descending 250 feet. That's negative every 10 minutes. Well, how many 10-minute increments occur within an hour? Six. So I multiply it by 6 because there's 250 feet down, all right, and we uh, there's 6 um, 10-minute intervals within an hour, and I get negative, whoops, hold on, yikes, ah, negative 1,500 feet, negative 1,500 feet. All right, any questions here? We've got, I think, one more example. All right, in our last example, we need to talk about finding the mean of a set of numbers. Okay? Now, if you remember, what does it mean to find the mean? What is it? What is the definition? To find the average. So there's two steps here. The first step is to add all of the numbers together, okay, or to combine them. So I need to use my rules for adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. Well, what do you see here about the signs of the numbers in the first example on the left? They're all negative. So they all have the same sign. So what do I do when I'm adding and subtracting integers with the same sign? What do I do? Add and keep. You add them all together and keep. Think about it on a number line. If you start at negative 7 and you go down 4, 
and down seven more and down two more, you're going farther into the negative. You've got to add all those numbers together and keep the negative. We, when we add and keep, what number do we get? We get negative what? Five. 20. 20. Then, but that's not the mean, because the second step says to divide by the number of numbers. How many numbers do I have in this set? Four. four. So what is negative 20 divided by four? Negative, negative five. five. Now, over here in my second set of numbers, I have both positive and negative integers. So if you remember what I taught you yesterday, I said, do what when I have both in a set? Group them. Add all your negatives together and keep. Add all your positives together and keep. And then take the difference. Go ahead and do that to find the sum of these numbers. So negative 17 minus 4 is negative 21. What's 21 plus 5 plus 30? When you combine all your positives, what do you get? 56. I heard it. 56. Okay. So now I've simplified all my negatives. And I've simplified all my positives. Now I take the difference. What's negative 21 plus 56? 35. 35. Subtract and take. Then you divide by the number of numbers and you get 7. You have two of these on your quiz on Monday. Two of these on your quiz Monday. Group your negatives, group your positives, take the difference, subtract and take, and then divide by the number of numbers. Um, I think... I think that's everything. Let me double check. Um, Don't you add no, you've got to subtract them. They're different signs. All right. If you understand that, that's everything you need to know from multiplying and dividing integers.